views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Power comes from an inner knowing, inner joy, inner awareness, inner freedom, and a higher power. The Art of Powerful Living Radio with Robert Schoenfeld is here to inspire every human to live lives that are rich, fulfilling, on purpose, and fun. Get ready to take this journey and discover the power of joy in all aspects of life. This show is life transforming. You will hear Dr. Pat and Robert discuss topics on joy, love, art, and expanding our minds to what's possible. Join Dr. Pat Basili and Robert Schoenfeld and the Art of Powerful Living Radio, starting right now. Wow. Hey, everybody. The Art of Powerful Living Radio, Robert Schoenfeld, and I am Dr. Pat. And Robert and I are going to be doing this really, really cool radio series. It is so amazing. I get to watch how an idea comes to life and takes on a whole new meaning. And this is what I love. I love introducing all of you to people like Robert who are out in the world being amazing, helping others. You know, he is the author of the book For the Love of Joy, but more than that, he is an amazing artist. And today, if you're watching on Facebook, if you're not, I'm just going to tell you, in addition to being on air here, we're live streaming on Facebook. All you have to do is go to Transformation Talk Radio um, and on Facebook and you'll see it. You're going to see throughout the show some of his artwork. You're also going to hear his passion, his purpose, and why the art of powerful living is so important to help us tap into the truth of who we are. So today, we're going to explore what is it that Robert wants to do to create a better world, and what exactly is the art of powerful living? Robert, it's great to have you here. Good morning, Dr. Pat. Wonderful to be here. Thank you very much. Isn't that cool? Wasn't it cool to like hear that, you know, like cool music and intro to the show? Is it like, this is like an exciting day. It is the most exciting day ever. You know, this is the uh, solstice, 2017. We have a, a lot of... Oh, I totally forgot. I think I actually even forgot it was June. <laughs> um, you know, there's a question that I'm known for asking, and it's going to, it's a perfect question because it gives folks an opportunity to get to know you and understand you and the journey. So Robert, here's the question, you know, here we are today. We've been working together for months. We've got months. We're going to continue to build. We're going to be introducing people, you know, the art of powerful living coaching, the whole thing. What are some of the challenges, some of the obstacles that you, Robert M. Schoenfeld, has had to overcome to bring you to this very moment? Wow, great question. Great question. We've all had great challenges in our life. I can go back to my college days where my dream almost got taken away from me. And we've all been in a situation like that where we, we, we focused our whole life on something and we love it and our energy is there, our focus is there, we can see our future there. And then all of a sudden, it feels like it's being taken away. So here's, here's a kind of a cute story. Back in my college days, I was accepted to a very good art school called the Kansas City Art Institute. Came in as a junior and uh, doing ceramics. Loved ceramics. Just loved clay. You know, the creative process, everything about it. And the chairman of the, of the department there, Ken Ferguson, big guy, very imposing, but, you know, kind of a soft guy inside, but a tough guy on the outside. Anyway, we got along great the first semester, and I was doing wonderful in the first semester. But Dr. Pat, something happened the second semester, and the bottom fell out. And I was doing lousy work. How do you flunk out of art school, especially doing ceramics? <laughs> it's just one that you take just to get the easy A. So, you know, there was a rumor going around the studio that I was going to get let go, that I was going to get kicked out of school. Wow. Uh, yeah, and that that hurt because I like I say that was my life. It was my love. It was my passion. So Ferguson calls me in the office at the end of the semester, 
And he sits me down and goes, okay, Sean Fell, what are you going to do this summer? And I go, well, I'm going to go to the Grand Canyon and go to have some fun. He goes, no, you're going to summer school. So I went to summer school. But at least I felt relieved that I was still, you know, being brought back into the class. Went to summer school and I did worse. Oh, so wow. Now the rumors were really flying around the school that I was going to get busted, get kicked out. So uh, Ferguson calls me in the first day of the semester and goes, okay, Sean Fell, what are you going to do? And I go, I'm going to do uh, fun. I'm going to do a. Uh, Tea ceremony wear, which is the highest aesthetic, you know. He goes, no, you're not. You're going to do functional stuff. You're going to do good. And I and we argued a little bit, but he won. Actually, we both won. We both did. You know, I did both functional wear as well as the tea ceremony wear. And I came back. And uh, by the first semester, I was doing good. By the second semester, I was near the top of the class. And there was a rumor going around the, the school that uh, Ferguson said, listen, there are only six great potters left in Japan, and Schoenfeld could be one of them. And at my final critique, he put a little star on my forehead. I huh. said, John Fell, you go back to Seattle and you'll be a star. So, you know, I made it, but it was close. Yeah, I almost, the dream almost got taken away from me. Yeah. You know, too, what do they say? Too close for comfort, right? Sure. What did you learn from that? Because that's not the end of the story. But, you know, you didn't give up either. You know, a lot of people, when they're told you have to go to summer school, they're like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but what was going on inside of you when you were hearing all these rumors? I mean, that man, that's tough. It was very tough. But, you know, I think the secret to any success is keeping the dream alive. You know, focusing on where you want to go and find, being creative and finding ways to get there. And secondly, have someone that believes in you. Ferguson believed in me. He saw something in me that had potential. And he helped me bring it out. So, all right. Is that like, you know, okay, that's Robert. That was then. And now here you are. Or did you have to go pass another test? Lots of tests. So Lots here, of tests. Here, here's I, a, here's I can't stand tests. Yeah. Story. Grab, grab some popcorn, sit back. I'll tell you another story. <laughs> So um, I'm a painter now, and that was back uh, many years ago when I was doing ceramics. So here's the story about how I became an artist, a painter. And it's really kind of a fun story because I'm all about color and beauty, and that's my whole life right now. How do I bring more color, beauty, and joy into the world? So once I left Kansas City, I headed up for California and headed up the coast to find the most beautiful spot in the world to build my studio. And I came across you know all the beautiful spots of Big Sur and, and San Francisco, the fishing villages of Oregon. Wasn't finding what I was looking for. But when I got by Port Towns in Washington, there was a little lake called Lake Leland, and there was this beautiful mountains of the Olympics shooting on the other side of the lake. A little cabin there right on the lake. I ended up buying that cabin, built a studio right next to it, so my studio is right next to the lake. My house actually went over the water so I could hear the uh, waves wow. underneath. Wow. Built, built a studio and made pots there for a couple of years and got frustrated because I couldn't make a living. How do you make a living when it costs more to buy, to buy the clay than it does to sell the, the bowl or the, you know, or the pot? Oh, yeah. It. So very frustrating. I'm looking wow. at what can I do? You know, what I, my education didn't uh, prepare me for anything else. But Pat, what happened is timing is everything in life. And I've been meditating, doing TM for many years. And at this time, the talks between Egypt and Israel had broken up. Mm -hmm. And there was, they fought many wars, and Carter was trying to create a peace uh, pre treaty between the two of them. It wasn't working. So in meditation, there's a philosophy that if you bring large numbers of meditators together in an area to meditate, it causes a coherence, a peaceful effect. And it can cause, cause peace in the whole area. And the larger the numbers, the bigger the effect. So it was like a gift to me. Maharishi, wow. Maharishi Yogi, the founder of Chancel Meditation, invited 500 meditators to go to Israel, Safat, which is in northern Israel, to meditate for two and a half months to help create a more peaceful environment so the peace talks could get back on and initially sign the peace uh, treaty. So I jumped on it. It was like I've never been to Israel before. It was a dream to go. Uh, and while we were there, we were taught the cities program, CM cities program, which is an advanced technique in meditation. It's very powerful, very dynamic. So when we got there, it was just wonderful. Safat's a beautiful mountain town. It's an artist colony. It's where the Kabbalah was written. So that's wow, the yeah. spiritual area of Judaism. Yeah. And we were there for a month and a half. 
and the peace talks go up, got back on. And within two months of us being there, they, they initialed the peace treaty. And uh, so that was, it was wonderful to see that all happening. But I got a gift, Dr. Pat, while I was there. Because while I was meditating, I would close my eyes and I would see these colors. And these colors were the vivid colors, the purples, the violets, the reds, the yellows, the greens. And my intuition was so strong to come back to Seattle, do not touch the clay, and start painting, and I'll be very successful. And it was just a gift. I had a smile in my heart, smile on my face, and it was wonderful. <laughs> when I would close my eyes, I see these colors. I could even, well, as my I could even open my eyes and see these colors. And I knew that it was, it was like that feeling of invincibility that I want everyone to have. And that's part of the art of powerful living, is to have that inner invincibility, that inner joy, that inner glow, that you know who you are, you know where you're going, and nothing can stop you. Yeah. You know what I love about that story is, you know, that's what you and I have in common. Um, you know, being part of learning to follow our intuition. And I don't know if our listeners um, or, or our viewers that are watching on Facebook can see the painting uh, behind you, but also across the screen throughout this show, you'll be seeing uh, Robert's art. We just we just showed you several uh, several of his masterpieces. They're incredible. But you know, I want to get back to something about this, and I know we're going to talk about it throughout throughout the show. You know, when we come back, I want to talk about how intuition turned into joy for you, and what that looks like. And how is it that it all has now become the art of powerful living? Uh, we're going to take a short break, everybody, when we come back. More with Rob Schoenfeld. Uh, please go uh, to theartofpowerfulliving.com or artofpowerfulliving.com. Check it out. Uh, much more to come. You know, we've got an amazing series of ways that you're going to be able to tap in to your own personal canvas of the art of powerful living. Let's take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back. 